What's going on, guys? It's Josh from the Trading Fraternity, and this is EarningsWhisper.com. So I didn't include this in what I'm about to show you, but this is a great site uh, for earnings, and I, I kind of hesitant to show you this because I want you to learn how to do the work so you get a better understanding, but this does make it easier. It gets you a calendar so you guys could start to prepare for this next earnings season as well as any other earnings season, but it kind of highlights the main companies. You could go through this and it'll give you some information. They even have it where you could, uh, you know, vote uh, so you could, uh, you know, and see what other people are thinking. So they're using the idea as the cult man, the, the sourcing information, or I probably copied them. They've been around for a while, but this is a great video to watch, but now I'm going to show you a clip from a live stream we did over the weekend. This was our first night live stream, so make sure you check us out live. We're trading live every day, Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. It's going to be pinned in the comment section, the channel there, but it's a lot of fun. And again, coming into earnings, we're going to be going over a lot of plays. We're even going to be streaming the earnings and the conference calls and talking about you know the main ones as they happen. But Essentially, I talk about, you know, buying a stock before earning and even setting it up to play the option, you know, what to look for before stock earning. So this is a long video. It takes me about like a, a, a pretty decent amount of time to explain everything. However, uh, in my defense, I think it goes, you know, very, very in depth if that's what you're looking for. I promise you guys will get a lot from it. I really enjoyed it. I think the people in the chat did. And if you want to go see the chat, you could simply go to the live streaming channel and watch the, the live recap and watch this unedited and all that. You know, I chopped it start to finish for you guys, made it a little bit easier. But even simply now, this is why I'm adding this, the top three things to look for simply so you don't have to go through it. But again, I encourage you to do so. Number one, first thing you want to look for is guidance and the company's guidance uh, and also analyst guidance uh, and what they're looking for, both what guidance the company issued last quarter and how, how has it changed and also analysts and again, the different expectations. That's the first thing you want to look for. The second thing, the second thing is the products or segments that a company has. So the main thing. So again, we went over the filing. Actually, I think I still have it up here. Yeah, I still got it here. So this is the past 10Q. Uh, and I talk about going over this in the video and explain the whole process. But you want to look for the company's main metrics. You know, and that that's what it is said simply what they're offering, their business line segments, so on and so forth. That's the second one. Then the last one uh, is to go through the option chain. And again, I explain this in depth and watch the pricing in and what to do before earnings, after earnings, you know, and getting an idea of what this is telling you. And then we put it all together. There's some little fun facts in between. But again, I think it's very, very in depth. I didn't expect to go that in depth. So that's why I want to highlight this for you guys. So make sure you watch it and enjoy it. And now lastly, I say it in the video. I'll say it one more time. I really need you guys to work with me on this, you know, and that's why I'm also putting it here on the main channel because if everybody does this and comes to me now instead of with plays, uh, just saying, what do you think of these calls for earnings, but comes with me saying, hey, this is the guidance. They do the research. They start coming with hypothesis and theses and then also tell me about the option chain and are looking at that and then the segments and everybody knows it can be very informative and helpful. And again, there's so many companies. So I talk about that during the live stream. You'll hear me rant. You'll hear me rant about the subscribing. So sorry for taking so long, but here it is. I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you in the morning and the watch list tonight. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the main lesson here. And what we have titled of the stream is this is the main thing I want to go over how to analyze a stock. And this is the earnings edition. So I want to focus here on earnings uh, for a few reasons. One, this is going to be important because it's coming up here. Uh, the week after next is going to be a big earnings week. And that's why I said it's very, very exciting. If you guys listen before, uh, you know, we were just chatting here. Uh, I said, you know, you guys got to survive one more week, man. Don't blow up your account so that you guys can make it into at least earnings and you could leverage your money a lot better. But it's coming up and this earnings is pivotal for many, many reasons, especially if you've been following along with the the global news and every, everything with the markets, even since the last two quarters, it's been amazing and exciting and, and honestly kind of crazy. So these earnings have a lot of implications, both even for the future and coming into 2019. So that's the first, you know, I guess most current and important reason why you guys would want to know about earnings. But now at the second respect, you know, 
what it means for these companies and you know understanding the role of earnings in the stock market and how earnings impact the value of stocks how you guys could trade earnings how people play and just overall what it means and you know this is why now being live so for the people watching the recap you guys are going to get to listen in and even if it does get slow with this bear with me because you guys here now who are live uh don't think you guys are going to get away with with being quiet okay I, I need you active here colt because uh to explore a lot of the intricacies with with options I want you guys to ask a lot of the questions because a lot of people are, are, have already been going off. Why does a stock go up and down before options? People are saying, don't try to predict the market. You know, people think earnings are gambling. People, you know, uh, people have ideas for earnings. So we could even see what some people are learning uh, or looking at next week too. And we could talk about that. But that is the main part. So I want to start with the basics. So I want you guys prepared. And oh, let me tell you guys this now, please. Now, I'm going to say this again. Now that we have more people here, this is what I need for you guys. And I said, I'm going to show you guys this and I want you to understand this so that coming Monday, uh, Monday through Friday next week, when we're trading live, when we're on stream, I want you guys equipped and prepared to know how to start looking at this stuff, to know how to go about scanning for these earnings and start even getting an earnings watch list in mind and even even the companies and start trying to find the companies you want and because like I, I was saying this earlier there is so many companies the week after next there's literally going to be about 100 to 200 companies some days have like three uh, you know two three weeks from now have like uh like 350 370 uh earnings on on one single day so there's a lot of us here I want you guys, you know, again, if people take it upon themselves to focus on 10, 20 stocks in certain industries, we could do a lot. So again, that's why I'm going over this. I want you guys to actually learn this. And then again, so if you are new, you better be on the stream. Take what you're learning here. And, you know, I could even help you guys. This is going to create a good guideline for when we are trading live tomorrow. And again, you guys could be a lot more efficient and productive. So let's talk about the first thing now how to analyze a stock earnings edition. So I said how to analyze a stock. This is going to be different than analyzing, you know, a stock normally like, okay, am I going to buy this? Am I going to add this to my long-term portfolio? Am I going to trade it? Yada, yada, yada. It, it's a lot different than that. There's a few key factors that are going to be important. You know, as far as like the basic premise if you are analyzing a normal stock, like some things as you know, when we get to looking at the trading strategy around earnings, we're going to talk about it. But market cap is important. Uh, the share structure, how many shares are traded. Um, when we get into analyzing the earnings reports, this will become important. But again, in your research leading up to it, it depending again, depending on the company. And let me that even reminds because depending on the company, when you're researching stocks coming in earning or analyzing it, the share structure could can and cannot be important again, fundamentally and even both if you're trading it. But like I already brought it up and I have to say this at the beginning, the answer here is always it depends. So that's the one thing I want you guys to even understand anything with economics, anything, you know, with every single company, like what do I do with this company? The answer is always depends. Every company is very unique and it's not saying that, to sidestep a question or not answer anything fully it's to to keep a wide scope to understand the possibilities and, and what that means and then two you know like i said we are going to talk about it uh when i when i go over stuff with you guys in the chat however earnings uh, right off the bat we are going to look into talking about analyzing them how to you know get an edge on earnings to some degree um, and, you know, I say it with such hesitation because here's the main point. Earnings is a gamble and you never know. You know, uh, honestly, the main thing with earnings, I'm even, you know, this is the part of the main lesson here of what you guys need to understand. We're going to talk about what the earnings mean and, and how, you know, why they're important. But at the end of the day, whether they're good or bad, the one thing that you cannot predict, which is, you know, makes earnings a coin flip, which makes it a gamble is you don't know how the market is going to react. It's simple as that. It's just and we've seen it. If you guys have been if you guys have been on the streams and you've been following news, we've seen certain events, 
it's not always going to play how you expect a lot of times. And that's the problem. You know, a lot of people, man, you know, it's funny. A lot of people, you know, a lot of issues they face in life in trading. Uh, it's not because of the issues they think it, it is. It's because they do something and it doesn't go how they expect. And that's what makes them have a certain attitude or, or feeling about something. You know, people pick up a new hobby, a career that, you know, a lot of they go to the gym, they start going to the gym, they spend a week and they're still fat and it's not what they expect. And then they blame the gym and they say it doesn't work. You know, it's the same thing with earnings. You know, it, these could destroy your account and these could be awful uh, really, really awful. So you got to be careful. Uh, but at the end of the day, you could do all of the research in the work in the world. You could do all the work. You could spend hours and hours and hours, but at the end of the day, it, it won't always go how you expect. You got to be careful. It could do anything. And that's because the market has to react, you know, simple as that. You have to let the market you have to understand that role. And now what we're going to be looking at is how do you know how the market is going to react or how can you get an idea of what the market wants and what the market's expecting. And now that depends per company by, but by looking at a few companies, you could get a, a general idea of, of how everything's supposed to play out. So again, back to the first thing, you know, like I was saying here, a lot of this stuff, you know, fundamentally matters, but now the first thing and first things first, when I when I tell you guys, if you are going to start looking at a company for earnings, um, the number one thing, and now this is, I'm, I'm starting very broad, so all of you guys could go look and start finding, uh, you know, plays to make, but what it has to do with is guidance, and, and that's the first thing you guys want to be looking up. So the number one, the first step, you know, analyzing earning, uh, analyzing a stock for its earnings you right right off the bat you want to understand what its guidance is so this is what i've been bringing up on stream i think i'm going to pull up netflix because i like that and, and again if you've been watching the nightly recaps you've been watching what we've been talking about the news and everything and even again since this whole october fiasco and what's been going on here i've been saying this earnings might even be good simply because uh a lot of companies had downward guidance the last quarter or two so Let's talk what guidance is and understand, but that's the first step. So I'm going to show you guys how to get that. Uh, we'll go through um, NASDAQ.com, but now there's no point of, you know, it's easy to find. It, it's easy to go look up, you know, honestly. You, you, uh, you So someone even said, so Tim said, not company guidance. You want analyst guidance. Yes and no. You want both of those. But like I'm saying, those are easy to get. And hopefully if you guys have been in the stream, man, and you've asked me enough questions to get it out of me, you know my my take on trading and you know my take with these concepts. It's not enough just knowing what the thing is, you know? It's not enough knowing what the guidance is. It's not enough knowing what the words mean. It's not enough knowing what the IV is. It's not enough in any anything, you know? What really ha is you have to understand what it means, understand the, how it functions and the underlying aspect behind it. So here with guidance now, why is this important for earnings? So this is the stock. And so remember, we are trading the, we're trading the options, so we want the stock to move. But again, if you are trading the stock, same thing applies. What moves the stock and why do the stocks move on earnings? So that's, we, we, I guess we have to start with that question first. You know, Stocks, when the companies are reporting, you guys, you have to understand, we've been watching stocks you know, every single day live here on the stream. You guys have been following it for for various you know durations, but you see some days the stock market moves on news events. Uh, where's the you know? I think one of them's the Fed. Uh, you know, one of these days is the is the yield curve inverting. Uh, all, all sorts of uh, different events and you know certain things that affect the value, either how much a company is making currently, or if it's uh, affecting a certain industry or if it's going to have an effect on future profits, it makes the stock individually go up or down, or it also makes the whole stock market as a whole go up or down at the same time too. So all you guys have been watching that all, all, all the day. And you know, certain events, again, it's in the stock trading course, equal and opposite reactions, depending on what it is, it makes the markets move a, a little bigger than others. But now when it comes to earnings, why do companies move at earnings? 
because this is the every three months every company has to report that's why they call it quarterly earnings so once every three months you get earnings happening and that's the company's update they pretty much say in the last three months this is how much money we made uh here's any um anything important that we uh anything that important that we've done um uh, you know business events and then also what they plan to do and that is now guidance but again they're giving everything about their company how they performed and then now how they expect to do so public companies they're taking money from the public they have to inform people that's why that all comes up so that's them disclosing and think about it. if you want to invest in a company you want to know how much money they're making how they're spending the money what they're doing it on and then what they plan to do any other changes so on and so forth so that's why companies move because once they release that number every three months and you know here's the conclusion and kicker of that stocks move on earnings because now that's the actual time there's a one time every every three months this happens and it's when earnings come out the actual value of the stock changes or more or less it actually gets released you know we get to see what happened to the balance sheet how much they're earning so on and so forth so the real underlying value of the company is truly changing even when they say what they plan to do and all that so that is the most important part about that so that's what's causing it so that's why it's earnings are both risky and a gamble because like i said one the risk you don't know how the market's going to react and you don't know how stocks will go down or go up or down you know based on the earnings report or if something happened by surprise but they cause big they cause big moves because the value is changing and again that's what makes it a, a overall a good you know catalyst to that degree so let me get some water here make sure you guys drop a thumbs up on the video you can just turn your chat off if you're on mobile and then also subscribe we're live here monday through friday i've been bringing it up here throughout the lesson live because you know it, it's been very very important so uh again like i was saying though the stocks move um based on the earnings this is that time now every every three months they report the value is actually changing so that's a good time to invest and this is why it's risky though because now if things change too much or too again it both is both risky and lucrative so now let's go back to guidance that's the first thing i'm telling you guys if you want to find companies for earnings and start scanning the the big thing that you're going to come into with earnings is looking for that's the first thing i look at is guidance now and understand why it's important when that company is reporting they're saying hey this is how we did this is how much money we made in the last three months they're going to hit investors with something more important they're going to say this is what we plan to do or, or how much we expect to make and earn money and how much our shares are going to be wor are worth you know the earnings per share so on and so forth how much money we plan to spend they're saying this is what we plan to do in the next three months and now why is that important because one investors want to see how you know they're using their money but now think about this think and this is where I want you guys to understand the a big reason why earnings are so important is the company's guidance so again this is the company every time earnings is given the company is not only saying how much money they made their profit revenue and all that they're also saying what they plan to make in the future what they plan to do for next earnings and how much they're expecting to make so on and so forth so why is that important because ask yourself if anybody is going to know how much money and how much how valuable and how good netflix is going to perform if anybody is going to have the answer to that it's not going to you know it would be the lord almighty jesus christ he would actually know probably the only person um it, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be anybody else now it wouldn't be any analyst it wouldn't be it would be nobody except for the company itself it doesn't matter what i think anything so literally the company itself this is why guidance from the company is so important they know their company better than anything else they have all the data they have all the numbers they're able to look at it so their their guidance is important and they're able to forecast and let people know the headwinds and they have to if they if they surprise or if they don't disclose anything that can materially change the value that's illegal so again looking at some that's why I say always look back at the guidance because they're slick. They could make it very, very slick and change stuff and put stuff in the earnings, guide up or down, and warn investors because, again, 
you know, that's why when we go over the earnings report after the company's report, that's what makes the stocks move and it starts going up or down day after day because it starts picking apart little by little. Or this is good. This is bad. But again, the companies could slide some stuff in there. So guidance is important. So that's why the first part, you want to look for the company's guidance. So anytime now I tell you guys, OK, hey, you know, how should I start looking for a company for earnings? What do I go look up? you know, so on and so forth. The first thing you should be looking for is what the company guided to. You want to see what they're expected to do. So again, on NASDAQ, there, there's a few ways. Why am I doing it? So you go to NASDAQ.com and you guys could do this a few easy ways. Uh, I'm going to show you one. You could get it through the filing. Their last, if simply, if you just go, how do you get their guidance? If you want it, like if you want it official, you just literally go to the filings uh, through Netflix, go to their last... Um, their last quarterly, their last 10Q or 10K, depending. I think Netflix will probably be a 10K. Yeah, so it's going to be a 10K, but you could do that and you'll find it in there. I, I, the 10K is the yearly, so it's, it's going to be packed in there. That's going to be hundreds of pages. But another way, all you got to do to simply do is Netflix uh, guidance. Oh, wait, let's see. Netflix, maybe something. Uh, Netflix company earnings guidance. That's what it was. So boom, just put whatever the company is, the stock company earnings guidance, you know, play around with the Google and you could play around with the Google <laughs> and you could find links and you know, you, this is how you scan through, make sure it's literally the most recent one. And you know, there's going to be articles of, of people talking about, Oh, this just announced they're going to summarize it for you. If you want to make your research quick, but always double check this, you don't want to get this number wrong, but coming in and analyzing any earnings again, the first thing is be aware of the guidance. So I want you, this is how you become aware of it if you aren't familiar. But again, so you could just Google that. It brings us here. It's going to say some stuff. It's going to highlight how much money they made and their revenue. And this stuff is important. Um, and again, per each company, we're going to talk about this. You'll notice in the highlights, EPS is always going to come up. Revenue is going to come up. These are always the two, you know, universally the main metrics. The other ones though, like you see domestic subscriber editions and international subscriber editions. We're going to talk about this. This depends for every stock. Every stock has other options or, or excuse me, every, uh, every stock has certain segments or metrics. These are literally called metrics that they report to highlight their company. And that one, and this is one of those signals of, Hey, what is going to push the market? What does the market like and not like literally you go through. So, and even then, if you guys look in the chat, uh, you know, people are, are posting links, you know, you could use like earnings whisper, <clears throat> earnings whisper. You could go to the investor relations for the company. There's all sorts of ways. I'm trying to show you guys, you know, quick, easy ways so you could get it. But I'm going to show you something here on Netflix. But <clears throat> again, the key is educate yourself. This is an easy way to go back and find it, but make sure you're aware of, make sure you're aware of the guidance. So let's see. So here it is. They say the things that it says the company is guiding lower than expected results for the first quarter of 2019. Netflix expects earnings per share of 56 cents on revenue of eight point or excuse me, of 4.49 billion compared with Wall Street consensus estimates of 82 cents and 4.6 billion. So, you know, when did they report January 19th? Um, did they drop? Yeah. So you see Netflix drop there. And I remember Netflix, they had good earnings, but why did Netflix drop? So again, the guidance is important coming into this earnings. And the guidance was also important last earnings because I remember this, you know, from last quarter, Netflix did good, but they guided lower. So they did good on this report. They said that this last three months was good, but they said from here now, when they reported here, they said from here to here, they're not expecting to do good. So that's why the, the stock dropped a little, but it held up in it. Now think about it. It's literally at the almost exact same value coming in because they guided lower and the company itself said it's expecting to go down. So that's now here's the important key because now we're aware of Netflix's guidance coming into this next quarter. So again, how you could interpret, there's many ways to interpret it, but now understand how much they guided. So take a look. Netflix expects earnings per share 56%, 56 cents on revenue of 4.4 billion. That's the new guidance they released compared with Wall Street's estimates of 82 cents and 4.61. So again, 
initially before Netflix announced that based on the other earnings they were releasing and the other estimates, they now said, you know, well, we're going to come in at 30 cents below on the EPS than what Wall Street was expecting and about $200 million less on revenue. So I'm there's two one another thing to important about that. We also have to see, you know, it's saying they lowered their guidance. So again, I'm saying pay attention to if the guidance did get lowered, pay attention to how much it got lowered in relation to Wall Street's estimates. And that's something we're going to bring up too, the difference between Wall Street estimates, but how much lower it is than Wall Street estimates and then how much lower than the company estimates. And that's why when you bring up the NASDAQ filing, it's a lot easier to get that information and it helps out a lot more. But again, so Netflix lowered it. Uh, so Netflix lowered their guidance a, a lot lower than Wall Street was expecting. So again, I'm already thinking that's bad. The revenue, the revenue guidance wasn't as low as the EPS. So that's telling me they're probably going to either be spending more money, higher tax rate or something, but they're expecting to make slightly less revenue. So they might report good subscriber numbers and other things that could bring the stock up, but the guidance was bad. It could mean they have a low bar to beat. And that's what I've been saying coming into this earnings season here, March, you know, April, 2019, is that a lot of companies like, again, Netflix here, they set the bar very, very low, uh, almost half of what it was prior. So they could beat it pretty easily again, though, too, though, if the company expected to do bad and this quarter, the economy wasn't as good as we expected and Netflix really bombed, then Netflix could really, really take a beating. And then again, the next thing will be their guidance. But that's the first thing. So now understand the guidance. We see what they're guiding. So now we know this is the number that, that they're expecting to do. So now why is this when they, you know, going back to the previous earnings and seeing what the company's guidance, now this is their target. So we know now that when Netflix reports in the next two weeks, they're estimating that Netflix is saying they're going to do about 56 cents per share. And the, Netflix is saying they're going to make 4.4 billion. That's their guidance. That's what they've issued. So that's important now because we want to see the estimates. So now this is where people talk about estimates. What, what, are, what are these estimates and how do they come up? Again, I just told you the first set of estimates, the company estimates. So the companies, when they are issuing their earnings, they release in their earnings statement Again, the 10Q, the 10K, they release an 8K prior and they say, hey, this is our estimates. We're estimating and then we're guiding. We expect, again, the companies expected the expected results. That's literally the same as estimates. So there's literally estimating that they're going to do that. The next set of estimates, and this is now when you see a stock report and everybody says, oh, the stock beat estimates, the stock beat estimates. It's not talking about this the company's estimates that's important one but usually the more important thing is now wall street estimates so who is wall street and what does that mean these are the analysts so if you guys have seen upgrades and downgrades there's certain analysts some stocks have more analysts than not and again the weight the weighting comes from the bank they work at who they represent and all that but the companies now are these analysts and these people researching stocks they're following netflix day by day month by month they're calling in these are the guys who are literally it's, it's not the market makers these are the people you hear call in on the phone calls when you hear the earnings report these are the guys calling in to the um to the conference calls you know these are the guys asking all the questions they've been following it so what are they doing um they make estimates on the company so they go and do it so now that's the next set of estimates that that people that you need to be aware of Again, the company estimates, but now the analyst estimates. And this is now, and we're, or overall, if they say Wall Street estimates, it's literally just the average of all of the top analysts. So here again, you go to NASDAQ, you enter in the stock, this will come up. Now go here, analyst research, stock analysis. You go analyst research and then EPS. So earnings per share. You could even see the same thing with like revenue and sales and recommendations in the summary, but, oh no, where, where is it? Excuse me, forecast excuse me, not EPS, you click forecast. So this will say the yearly forecast and now quarterly. So March, 2019, this is the one we're looking for. So now there's something called the consensus. This is the average. This is the main one people look at, but pretty much there's a high, there's a high forecast and a low forecast and the number of estimates. So it's saying 
out of the 12 estimates, the average or the, the number that it's, it's agreed upon really that it comes around is 57 cents a share. So again, Wall Street is expecting 57 cents per share between all the analysts. And again, we're seeing the guidance from last quarter. What does Netflix want? Netflix is saying 56 cents per share on 4.4 billion revenue. So Wall Street is expecting them to do 1%, one cent better. Now look at the high. The high forecast is 59 cents and the low is 53. So now there's 12 expectations and the revisions up or down. These are literally upgrades and downgrades that people are talking about. So think about now, do you guys see why upgrades and downgrades are so important and why they can move stocks? Because people are talking about stuff changing with the company or what they expect for earnings and they've been researching it. So they've been following it for so long. So it, it's, it's really hype. That's that's why these revisions or these upgrades or downgrades, that's why they're so important. But again, the, the more estimates, the better. But with 12 estimates and the consensus being at 57 with the high being 59, I'm getting the idea that a lot are, are kind of lower than 59 there because even then that's still a tight range. As you see here, you know, June's I think a better or well, look at the next quarter. Um well, no, even then, take a look. Even coming out to 2020 with March, they have a 50 cent guidance on here. So uh, uh, paying attention to the spreads between a lot of these, you know, the high and lows, this is a very tight spread. So it could be indicating most people are expecting something lower out of Netflix. So I'm kind of, you know, doing this so far going over this. I'm honestly kind of getting a little bearish because that spread on the EPS on the earnings forecast because it seems like if the highest was 59, people aren't really bullish on this. And that means the highest one was only three cents above the the Netflix guidance. So again, that could be it. Or what makes me bullish on Netflix that's in the back of my mind, like I said earlier, the fact that they, they did guide low, they, they're at the same spot. They could do good, you know, uh, essentially. And, the, and analysts are expecting them to do good, but that's the first part. So Hopefully you guys see there now that's we've already covered a, a decent amount there. We're, we've covered the estimates, the expectations there, and now even in the analysts. So those are all important, but that's the first thing I look at. So right away, you guys want to look at any stock right, right away. You go from the front to back. You just got to go and start getting the estimates that's what i do with the stock so you know this is i'm at least telling you guys what i do when i'm looking at a company for earnings the first question i have is what is its guidance and where is it going so let's start we'll stop there for a second now what questions do you guys have on that so this is your guys's time to to add to it and and let's see what see where we're going with this is guidance will be part of the price hike they did for netflix uh yes well the exactly so think about it if the company is ex if the company was truly expecting by next quarter to hike it or and that's going to get priced in the company would be pricing that in yes so they would put that in the company's guidance is expecting it the analyst guidance could be expecting they're saying well we think they're going to make this much from the hike so they could be doing it uh Taking notes, thank my show. Look at the next quarter. Explain that if they miss next quarter range is 137 to 55, and that and that is large. But again, it's basically you know, and it could make sense. The opposite reason why the range is so tight now is because it's coming into earnings. As that information's further off out, it's going to be less accurate. You know, where there's going to be a bigger a bigger spread. They hike the price next month. They hike the price next month, so then it won't show up then on on this earnings. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways from from reviews? Uh, what reviews? Uh, you know, you had a stream on the weekends. Uh, we, this is the first. This is the first weekend stream. We did a night stream before. We answered some questions, but the recap of this will be up. We started about like thirty minutes ago, uh, talking about this lesson here, of um, of what's it called? This lesson here uh, with how to analyze the stock before earnings. Going for puts. Keep up the good work. Let's go, baby. Change J calls. We'll talk about plays after this here. So again, and that's what I'm saying, you know, a lot of you guys, it doesn't matter now because if you guys are asking me, any of you ask me, hey, Josh, what do you got? What do you think about this, this company for earnings? 
let me ask you this. What do you think is the first thing I'm going to look up for any of those companies? You guys say, so Johnson, Johnson, Josh, what do you think about Johnson and Johnson for, you know, puts her calls. Even then that's the best part. Even if you ask me, no, what about day trading it tomorrow? I'm still going to bring up their earnings. <laughs> I'm going to say, well, we have earnings in two weeks. You, you should bring it up and we should look at it because it, it's it, people start to price into earnings. And that's another thing to talk about in guidance. What are your signals? Um, whether if it's a strong guidance, you know, you want to see the revision aspect. So whether guidance stays the same from last quarter, if they revise guidance up or down and then the rate at which they do it. So if, you know, like in that case, like why did they lower the guidance there? And even then, if we go back through the filing, I'm sure if we go on the 10 K for Netflix, the next big thing you want to understand is, okay, not only why did they do that? But you also want to, you know, why did they, they lower the guidance and why, you know, by how much is important. But we want to know, we actually want to know the reason why, excuse me, you know, like the actual what caused them to do it and justified them explaining that. So if you go through here, it'll probably explain it. Again, this is the 10K, as you see. This isn't what they file on the quarterlies. This is just a lot more intense. I don't even think it's like loading up or is it going to make me go through the uh, table of contents? What I got there, Sergio Perez, back at it, always at it, bro. So I think I might. Is, oh, this is the uh, this is the addendum. So this one's added to it, man. I think I might. Yeah, there you go. Well, here you go. Actually, if I go to the eight, is the eight gig going to show up? Yeah. So sometimes you don't have to always. If you want to try to, if you want to get even, because this was a ten k, right? So this is the annual report. But if I wanted to get it before, you relate. Wait for the day they release it, and usually the date they release the earnings. It's not going to show up as a 10Q. It's going to show up as an 8K at first. So you start with here, the 8K. Uh, and yeah, you see, announced financial results for the quarter ending, and that's the quarter results. And then they're going to say also they're going to attach the yearly. So here it is. They're saying how much they did, and this is how earnings is going to look. Again, they're going to say your revenue, how much money they made, uh, the margins and all the other stuff, you know, all the main metrics related to every company, you know, revenue, operating income, operating mar margin, all that diluted EPS, all that stuff's going to be important to how much the company's making and how much they're spending. Let's go Miner Perez. Shout out, shout out to Chad again. Uh, so that's important to how much the comp every company's making. These are key metrics, right? And then now it, it goes into the key metrics to the company, you know, streaming, how many people are paying and then paid net addition, how much cash they have, free cash flow, EBITDA earnings before interest tax, depreciation and amortization. I don't know if we're going to talk about that, actually. I don't know if that'll come up. But now here's the importance. So right away, you see, right when they, they release their earnings, they say, hey, this is how we did for last quarter. Boom, company guidance. So average paid membership in ASP rose 20% respectively. Uh, international increased what uh, foreign exchange moved against us as we saw, as we expected. So what, uh, what is he? I want to get to the, see, I'm scamming because I'm actually, I'm trying to get to the guidance right there. So they're saying what they did in the fourth quarter. So again, they're saying the results, and this is important to see what they did. Again, you should, you it's again, checking the last quarter, it's just great to just get up to speed with every company quickly, especially if you want to play them. But again, I'm skimming here to see what their guidance is and what they're going to say, because again, I want the reason why. We know now, again, and I got it from the quick Google search, we know what their guidance was, and we know it was a big drop in guidance. So that has my attention, and that was the question, you know, what are the signals I look for. So that has my attention. So now I'm going to go through the company filing with the actual company. And again, I could get the guidance and everything else, but I want to know the reasoning they explain because that's why the companies do that. When they say we're issuing downside guidance, they're saying, yeah, we thought we were going to make 84 cents a quarter, uh, but now we're expecting this. I want to know why. So, and I want to know the amount and have them explain it. So we change price pricing from time to time as we continue in great entertainment. We want to ensure Netflix is a good value. We just increased for U.S. prices for new members as we did in Q4, uh, Canada and Argentina. The new pricing in the U.S. will be phased in for existing members over Q1 and 2, which we will anticipate will lift ASP. So the there you go. It has our answers. The pricing they're raising, they did it in Q4 was only Canada and Argentina, but everywhere else and Japan, they're going to blend it into quarter one or two. So again, it's it's smart because they said it'll be phased in. 
they're going to separate it, but how they're going to, you know, this is getting really, really deep fundamental analysis. We're not going to go there, but they're going to pretty much take the members and whichever quarter they need to pad extra members to, they're going to use the pricing probably to, to throw it in and phase it in on one, one side or the other, but we won't get there. Uh, our multi-year plans keep significantly growing. We're targeting a, so then again, now this is the guidance. Um, and usually they should give it with, with like some bullet points and stuff. They'll have bullet points in a chart that'll make it easier, uh, to see the guidance. Actually, was it up here? Um, yes, it's up here. I'm going to show you guys that too. So we'll hear the, I'll show you here so you could get the, the text, but now this is them. It sounds very informal because it is, but it's saying our multi-year plan is to keep, this is all guidance. The minute they say we plan to do something, we expect to do something, that is guidance for a company, especially in a formal setting like this. That's why Elon Musk always gets in trouble when he talks about Tesla on Twitter, because if he says, I, I'm going to go make a million cars tomorrow, people are saying, well, if you're going to make a million cars and that's through Tesla and Tesla's publicly traded, that's something that could affect the, the price of the stock and how the money is going to be spent and make money, all that. So that's why anytime they start talking in any way, shape or form, regardless of the language, you have to understand that's guidance. So this is now the, the guidance they're saying. We plan to keep significantly growing our content while increasing our revenue faster to expand our operating incomes. We're targeting a 9% operating margin in Q1, which we expect will grow over the course of the year. So again, they're saying they're targeting 9% operating margin. And again, that's important to a company. And again, this is now reading filings and understanding what certain metrics are are important. We're not going to focus on that today. I am going to talk about certain metrics. And this is just when you start looking at the, at the companies, but which we'll expect to grow over the course of the year, full year target remain our operating margin remains 13% uh, versus 10%. A majority of our revenue is not in dollars. Uh, so when they're our material FX moves, investors know to expand pro pro proportionate top line changes in such FX cases, we'll seek to adjust our pricing and cost over time. But since that, we'll lag revenue changes. So wait a minute. Uh, I missed it, everything. So I missed the other guy. I, they, so they, I think they added it. I think it was right here. So that one was just top. That was just the margins. I missed it here. The quarterly guidance we provide is our actual internal forecast at the time we report and we strive for accuracy. So they're saying at this current time, this is what we expect. So here it is. We forecast global paid net additions, 8.1 million plus 8% year over year with 1.6 million and 7.3 internationally. Our Q1 revenue forecast represents 21 year over year growth. Our paid membership growth is fairly consistent quarter to quarter revenue growth varies due to factors like fx changing and timing prices time and uh, and timing of price changes across different markets for example we forecast q1 international sp will be up year over you excluding fx so they're saying now they're uh you know they're talking about what they expect and they're saying they made it seem kind of good it's it's so what happened here wall street was guiding lower in addition, they're, in a sense, they raised guidance last quarter. It just wasn't up to Wall Street. So, again, that's giving us more of the story. Netflix didn't cut their guidance. Again, everything their guidance is is an increase year over year, and they're not saying they changed it. However, uh, but what he did do instead was um, instead of changing, you know, mm, what was I saying? The quarterly guidance. Oh, yeah. Instead of getting downside guidance, you know, issuing downside guidance, theirs was just lower than what Wall Street was expected. That's why they responded differently. But they're saying that, the again, the price changes, the phasing in, they said the timing of the price changes and foreign exchange, that's going to affect the revenue growth. But they're saying international growth uh, and people will be up year year, ex excluding the Forex. So they're saying members is going to go up revenue is probably going to go down and that's going to be one of the factors. So it's kind of a mixed signal, but it's interesting. So that's, but that's the signal though. You see, so I didn't see anything. It was, a, that was a mixed signal. Like I said, you don't really know if it's giving anything, but if it was giving you the reasons and we could pin two and two, I think for foreign uh, exchange is pretty stable. Um, I think the only thing was maybe a potential for slower, weaker growth. The analysts are priced low. Um, the guidance is still an increase. And it's a low guidance. So if they beat if they beat this guidance and the estimates guidance, they could they could rocket ship. Honestly, that's what I'm looking at. But 
Yeah, the guidance, the spread as we went and looked at the analyst spreads, I didn't like that part. That part spooked me out. Um, again, here, that makes me think that not a lot of people are expecting anything big, but um, I don't know. It could be decent so far. So that was a, long, a long-winded a long answer to that question. You guys talking about Elon and PayPal in here? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy. Hmm. Uh, how are you guys actually I'm with you thanks can we play both sides with limited risk yes exactly that's that's part of it man you said it sucks that's crazy man that already took me like 47 minutes just to explain that I think do I I talk too lot I think I talk too much but there's so much involved with this man Sergio Perez again baby Again, supposed to be in the club, but chose to be in your channel. Let's go, man. We'll, we'll pop bottles here, bro. You can kick it. Have fun. I can't believe it. That took a long time. It took 45 minutes to explain, though. So I don't know because there's so many things that still need to go into this. Um, you know, uh, again, like I said, what, in the, what was one of the signals that we are going to need to talk about? I was reading it earlier. Um, crap. Oh, yeah, the certain things, you know. We have the revenue and all that stuff, um, but what we all gonna, what you, we're going to start, again, I'll tell you guys now, the next thing we're going to be looking for, again, when you guys ask me, so we're not done with guidance yet, but for you guys to start getting an understanding of how you piece these steps together, you get the guidance, and then the next thing we're going to be looking for is the specific investment factors that the company wants. So again, I'll, I could do it because I could point it all out here with Netflix at the same time. Because the issue with Netflix, like you're seeing here now, um, well, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I got, I got something good for you guys. So as you see here now, when you look at the balance sheet here, Netflix is going to, um, it, it's gonna tell us something. Uh, what was it? I, I just got too excited on the, uh, the other part. Crap. Oh yes, uh, these. Um, mm -mm. What was it? Oh, yes. Here, uh, though, there's two things about this balance sheet. And again, this is the 10Q. So this is the company's like, um, you know, this is what they come from, right? When the, uh, you know, this is them listing the summary. Again, this is the 8K for their 10Q, the press announcement, right? When earnings gets released, this is the summary that gets dropped and that everybody goes crazy over, right? So here's the important part about this one. It has the stuff we've already talked about, the things that are most important to every company, right? Again, you should all know these and be aware, revenue, operating income, the margins, the net income, and then the EPS. That's all standard for every company. It doesn't matter what industry they're in, what they do, anything. But now you notice here, they're putting global streaming paid memberships, global streaming paid net additions, uh, and then the you know EBITDA, free cash flow and shares and stream you know streaming content obligations. So that's unique. This is unique and this is unique. The other stuff, this isn't unique and all that. But after they give this stuff, everything else they start to mention usually in the summary in the 8K, they're letting you know the company's letting you know what metrics that they track and document that is important to the company. So that's why they do that because you know companies and in investing in growth. It's not always just, you don't can't look at, okay, does the company make money or lose money? Oh, it doesn't make money. It's a shitty company. Although a, a business making money makes sense to make it a good company, that's not how you evaluate a business. So part of that, it comes into play with earnings because certain companies, you can't get a true idea of the value just looking at revenue, margins, and growth because it may not show underlying aspects of the business that have value and could be driving growth. So in the case of Netflix, that's why they focus on paid people paying to join up and then global. And you'll see other metrics as you go lower because even if Netflix loses money or they don't make as much money, or only make 8% on, on the money they're bringing in, they're saying, but look, we're growing, you know, 24% in our members year over year. And each member pays us 15, 20 bucks a month. You know, if we get a hundred members, we're making at $10. That's, you know, we're making a billion dollars a month off of them. 
and we're growing our members at 25, you could, do you guys understand how you could start using that to evaluate the company? And that's why too, when, when companies report and these metrics come out, people start to go, whoa, that if, if that, if the company is saying they grew at this pace and they expect to grow at this pace, that's how they start to value future growth. And that's what could change the value and make the stock go up and go crazy. So that's that. And so again, what I'm saying is then, you know, again, for, look for first the estimates and the guidance. But then after that, when you come in from there, the next part you're going to be looking at is the specific segments of the company that is interesting. So again, Netflix has streaming editions. Um, Chevron, an oil company, they're not going to have streaming editions. They're going to have probably air, uh, uh, barrels of oil pumped or even inventory, stuff like that. Uh, let's see another company, uh, Amazon, you know, they're not going to, they're going to say the key metrics of how many orders were shipped, their margins. So again, people really focus on margins for Amazon because we know they sell a lot and they make a lot, but how much are they getting per percentage on all the volume that they're doing? Uh, they want to know about the cloud. So again, that's how you start to analyze companies. One, you get their guidance, but from there, you're able to go one by one into these companies and get prepared to understand, okay, if this is important to the company, you could go from there and and understand, okay, this could affect this company, this could affect this industry, so on and so forth. Currency droid, awesome. Shout out to chat. How frequently do you review fundamentals? A lot. Uh, it's like this. This is part of, you see, and this is reviewing my fundamentals. It's even down, like I said, even with those segments, I'm taking in those segments I'm going over them and understanding the company itself, the competitors, how that company, you know, the role those segments play, and then looking at the world around it in the economics and industries and other data to get ideas of that. So there's that. But again, so focus on the segments. But now I'm going to tell you guys this. I need to go to the bathroom. Drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new. We're doing a nightly lesson. This is the first one we've done on the weekend, but otherwise we're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. So make sure you're subscribed and we better see you on the stream Monday morning. On the main channel too, we post the nightly watch list and other stock trading tutorials. That's in the description with the stock trading bootcamp. But um, yeah, let's take a little break here. Uh, it won't be too long. I'm going to go to the bathroom and then we'll come back. I'll answer some of your questions. Uh, we just, that took me about an hour to cover those first two topics right there. And we're not done. However, though, however, um, you know, here's the thing. The th I want you guys, I have an assignment for you when I go to the bathroom. I'm going to keep this up here. So I showed you guys here on this thing, this whole chart right here. You guys see from this whole little blue chart thing now. It goes back to what we just talked about. It has something special. I want to see if you guys could figure it out. It's related to what we just talked about. So I'm showing you this because I said, if you come back here, this chart and this quick little guidance, this will tell you the company segments. But now there's something really, really important on this chart that we have not talked about. I want to see if you guys could figure it out. So don't, you could post it in there. I'm not going to say anything till I get back. That is your assignment. Watch here and do that. But We'll give you guys like two, three minutes. Maybe we'll make it Jeopardy. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll give away something. Maybe we, we should do a Jeopardy. That'd be cool. We should do some game show on here. But I'm going to go pee. Be right back. Drop a like. I love y'all. Let's go. Wake up, boys. It's the weekend. We're going to get hyped, man. You guys hyped yet? I'm I got really hyped. I was, you know, I was taking a piss. I was thinking about you guys while peeing, and I was getting I was like, "Dude, that was a long, 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 long talk right there. There's a lot to that, man." But it made me think. I got really, really excited though because I'm actually really excited right now about it. It, I was like, man, I'm teaching you guys this. I was thinking about the, the, the next thing we're going to go over. And I was like, man, this could be very, very efficient. I mean, like you guys, we could kill it at this earnings season. Again, if we have all these people ready to, to go over it and go over this stuff, it'll make things a lot more efficient. We're going to be able to help each other out here. My plan will give you guys a couple more things to watch and pretty much give you a quick 
little formula so then that way well, you guys could start looking up you guys bring me the stocks with these three first things to look at i'll do the rest and we'll share the results on there that's i think you know and you'll and you'll get to learn in the process and we'll see what happens so i'm excited i think it's a good idea oh i'm ready Even uh, look at you guys are so you guys are too fundamental. So here's all right. So here was the question. I don't know if you guys answered it in the chat. I need to scroll up and see. Let's go, boys. You got to wake up here, man. I got to need you guys to wake up. This is live. This is live right now. You're lucky. So here's the thing on this one. Mm. Excuse me. netcast so all you guys are going straight to the fundamentals there was something on here that was important um what's up baby we're you're gonna catch it in the middle we're gonna post the recap with the time we started here on that so we'll have to see but so you guys are all looking at percentages numbers again i'm telling you the factors you need to look for so you could understand again the important factors of earnings that's why it has here this is a different type of balance sheet because it includes something different. I don't care about the growth. I don't care about anything like that. The The real important thing here is all the numbers we were looking for. That's why I'm telling you guys, I want you to understand this. I want you to go through, look up the news and confirm it, understand what the company's guidance is, be able to go through the filing uh, and find their guidance and see the reasoning the company's giving have the reasons listed why they're cutting guidance and in relation to their last guidance. But now it does all the work for you. And they told you right here, here is the forecast. So we're looking for the guidance Q1 19 forecast. So now this is what they just did. So they're saying these are the numbers we reported. So now this is the guidance they give. This is what they're expected to do tomorrow uh, or in two weeks. So when they report, they're going to say, this was our expectations and this is how we did. So, and it's going to let you know the growth year over year. So it's there, but again, understand why, get the reasoning and they explain it more in depth. This is the quick, this is the spark notes, but then understand the reason why they do that. Uh, so you said they will hike the price next month, but they will show it in guidance, won't they? Because the next three months will be prices. So again, uh, we we talked about that. We speculated at first, but uh, you got to be paying attention, Anthony. Uh, it already went up. We already know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, and they said it here because so quarter to quarter revenue growth varies. Uh, changes of timing. And uh, I don't know. Where was it? Uh, there it is. So saying we just increased our, so again, the company will explain it and they have it, but they're going to say, we just increased our U.S. prices for new members as we did in quarter four in Canada, Argentina, and Japan in Q3. The new pricing in the U.S. will be phased in for existing members over Q1 and quarter two. So they're saying, and I think they did say they do expect those numbers to still be higher, but they did say right here they're going to be phasing in the new members in quarter one and quarter two so all the new pricing and that's what i said that we're going to see it in quarter one or quarter two um and again they said it here right here quarter or quarter revenue varies due to fx factors like fx changes and fx changes is the currency that's why those global moves are important that's why i look at the the currencies during the day when we trade uh, and timing of price changes across different markets. For example, forecast Q1 international ASP will be up year over year, excluding FX. Um, I forgot. There was one line we read related uh, for that that's saying they were expected to have some more members. But so the price went up and the price is going up. But how that's going to reflect it, they're letting you know how they're going to do it. So there's that. But like I'm saying, your forecast is here. So now... Let's talk about, uh, uh, so again, let's recap the first two things. And this is why I want to tell you guys this, because like I said, we'll even go over some of the option plays you guys are going to be looking at uh, coming in here. But, and we could even go check the calendar and see what's coming up. But here's the, the thing. You guys, I want you, you know, if you're going to come to chat, you're going to say, hey, should I get calls on this, calls on that? 
you could come and give me the, this information instead and we could really do some research. So the first thing when you're looking up a company, understand its guidance. You need to know the company's guidance. You need to know Wall Street or the consensus, the analyst guidance. So what is the company guiding? What are the analysts guiding? How has that guidance changed from last quarter and why did it change? And, and those are your first two things. That's the first thing you need to know over pertaining to guidance. The next thing is understand for that company what its key segments or its key metrics are. Again, every company is going to be different. Facebook, it's stri or Facebook, it's literally a monthly active users. How many people are active on the platform monthly because they make money from advertisements so that pertains to the value of the company and could give you an insight into their growth. Netflix, it's how many people sign up, both free and not free. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, put put out another company out there that that gives you metrics. You know, Apple, it's iPhone sales because that's their metric, but Apple actually, you know, their earnings was good and bad last quarter, but it's been go it's been coming up now and that event was so good cuz they're saying one of our important segments they're going to report on with Apple will be services. So that is, you know, even coming into this earnings, that is going to be an important segment to watch. So even if Apple guided lower by $9 billion, investment investors will probably like their services growing at 40, 50% because they just made this crazy push and we'll see what that factors into. So that those are the first two things you need to know when you're picking up a company. So you guys are going to bring anything to me First thing you do, go check the company's guidance, analyst guidance, the consensus, and why that guidance has changed or moved and how it's, you know, the history on it, even just quarter to quarter, real quick, and then understand the main product segment. So those are that too. Here's the third one. Now, this is where I'm going to take you to the option chain. So again, there's analyzing the company with the options, right? Uh, but now, or excuse me, by looking at the data and we haven't gone over, you know, the fundamentals yet or looking at the thing yet. But again, I'm, I'm trying to give you guys something to make the process easier. You know, this is, I guess, a, a cheat sheet or shortcut and to be able to for you to be able to work together with me on this. So go to the go to the company's earnings. So when does Netflix report? Have we checked even when Netflix reports? Um, I don't even know. Netflix. <laughs> Oops, um, April 16th, I think so. So yeah, you can read a few. Thank God for Google. Thank God for the chat. Look at that. See, they got it. So April 16th, uh, that, that's coming up here. Um, I could even, I, you know, I probably, I could even pull up the calendar here, but people saying, so Tuesday, wow, today is, oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's this Tuesday. It's coming up this Tuesday here. Oh, oh wow. See, so this is the quiet week, but Netflix is, uh, it's going to be a good one. See, there it is. Netflix after hours. So right at the bell. Um, so this is going to be fun. Uh, but now, so go. This is the easiest thing you could do now. Here's the next step of your analysis on these. See, my option chain is so messed up. So it's at 350. All right. So this is what you do. It's Tuesday before, after, it's aftermarket. Uh, usually the tech companies report aftermarket. It's usually like your big names, like in the slow moving, the Dow components, the banks, the value stocks, they usually report pre-market. So again, little tricks you could pick up on. Uh, but, so take a look at this. Um, the third step now, the third thing to look for before you're playing an option now or analyzing you know, a, a stock to be able to play it for, e even then, here's the best part. Even if you don't trade options, this step still applies because the options market is telling you something. People are willing to pay for the right to buy and sell a stock. Some people are going to buy insurance. Some people aren't going to buy insurance. And again, the de supply and demand and the value of the contracts tells you something. But again, the main lesson I've been telling you guys on pricing in a contract, but now I'm going to tell you how you relate it into earnings. So you want to go to the, to the stock. And now here's also the next part I need to tell you. You could, because again, we're going to do more analysis on the earnings and figuring out where to go and what's going to be the next step and what, you know, highlighting and, and, and narrowing in on companies to play and what companies are good and what companies are bad. But sometimes you could find a good stock to play, but it doesn't mean there's going to be a good option. So let me say that again. You could find a good stock to play, but for the option traders, there might not be a good option to play on, you know, for earnings because of the pricing itself too. So 
you have to uh, you have to really take that into consideration. So this is a very important step. And a lot of you, right off the bat, you could scan this option chain, see what's going on. But then at the end of the day, you know, certain companies right at right off of the bat if you could see the prices are too high and you can't play it and like you know like someone said okay i only have a 200 dollars account and you're seeing all right well 200 dollars gets you still pretty decent you know more that's more than 10 percent out the money there uh you know that's that's not going to be worth it for you if you even put your whole account in so going and putting you know 20 bucks 10 percent on a 425 saying the stock is going to move you know $75. That's a 25% move. I mean, it is pretty possible and that could be good. And the benefit is Netflix is on a Tuesday, but that's pretty low, low odds there. You can't play that. So again, right off the bat, you could pull up these option chain. This isn't the lesson I'm telling you. This isn't the thing. But again, for you guys, depending on what your budget is, you could look at some of these option chains. And if it's just super expensive, you don't even have to waste your time because yeah, it may it may move it may be the best earnings but if the options even out of the money like the super far of the money they're not there it's not good and now let me tell you this well this let me tell you the first thing to do cuz there's two things about using the options one we're going to use the option for analysis and that's what we're u- doing right now we're going to use the option to tell us something about the stock again how to analyze the stock for earnings and then when it comes to playing the options there's a different strategy for how to select the options but again Come to the option chain and see what it's pricing in. So how do you do that? You go to the the option chain and then you go to the week of the earnings. So thankfully in this case, uh, April 18th is the earnings for Netflix. So if if Netflix was going to be reporting May 18th, I would go to May 18th. But now let me give you a caveat to how this works. The closer earnings is to the expiration, the more accurate this number and data is going to give you guys. So that's why this April 18th contract with Netflix being on Tuesday, this is giving us a more accurate representation of how the market feels about Netflix. But if Netflix was on May and we're doing this calculation for May, it's not going to be as accurate as, as doing this calculation a few days and then even the day of earnings. So hopefully you guys, you know, try to understand that if that's confusing, let me know. But in the whole point is it's the break even. Remember, it's looking at what the con- the market is saying about the stock through the option. So in this case, Netflix closed at 350.77. So the stock is not moving. Excellent. So that being said now, that option at 350 that expires April 18th. So again, at the end of the week on Friday, that's going for 1475. So at 350, the right to buy the call at $350, that means, you know, in the stocks trading at 350.77, that option has 70 cents, 77 cents intrinsic value. So it's already worth 77 cents. We would subtract that from the value. Uh, what are we left with? So 14, 14.75. So again, this is how you figure out this this calculation. You subtract the amount in the money you find the again er, go to the er, the date of earnings the week expiration of the earnings of the contract go to the contract in the money subtract any intrinsic value if it exists so in this case 77 cents minus 0.77 and we're left with 1398 so that number is how much premium so this contract is worth 77 cents if you bought it at 1478 75 you're paying $13.98 above that price, you know? So literally, this is the expectations that the market is 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 doing. You know, this is what the this is the expectation the option market is saying about Netflix. Why? Cuz think about it. The market maker is charging and they're willing to put up a bid at 14.55 as well all day every day and they're saying, well, by April 18th uh, we think the stock will be. We don't. They don't think it'll be higher than fourteen seventy-five dollars above where it's at now. Because if they did think it was going to be higher than that, the contract would be higher. Or if it was lower, or if they expected lower, it would be cheaper. Again, it's both the market maker and now the de- the supply and demand. If a lot of people are buying into a contract, 
that could raise the price too. So if there's a lot of expectations for earnings, that could raise the price up too. So that's why doing this calculation, the bigger this number, you're seeing what they're expecting. So again, by seeing that move, we're seeing, okay, based on this contract now, Netflix on the call side is pricing in 1398. So take 1398, divide that by 35077, and that's a 3.9% move. So literally, if you bought in the money right now, this contract is pricing in a 3% move. So that's why these guys at the money, they're not expecting to lose a lot from Monday. And then again, we're going to see how it closes at Tuesday. But essentially, the market is pricing in about 3.94% move. They're expecting by the end of the week, Netflix is going to be 4% up. So that's on the call side. So again, let's check the puts. Usually it's the same. Sometimes, usually the puts are actually, they should cost them more. They should usually puts price in something more. But sometimes, uh, so far, I've seen some reverse situations. But now, same thing here. 35250 but it's a put so again the 350 that's already in the money by 77 cents so again uh what would that be so 35250 minus 350.77 we're left with a dollar 73 in the money so that's a hundred a dollar 73 in the money uh i want to subtract that from 1475. So that's the in the money contract, fourteen seventy five minus what a dollar seventy three, I believe. Hopefully, I'm right. I hope so. I don't know. So that leaves us with thirteen oh two. So now on the downside, it's actually pricing in a downside of thirteen oh two versus pricing in now where the um thirteen oh two versus thirteen ninety eight on the call. So actually, the puts are cheaper. So that alone is saying if the calls are pricing in more then the calls are literally pricing in. Uh, that means the market's expecting the stock to move up because they're charging a higher premium on the calls in the money versus the puts. Again, and why we use the in the money because that's essentially like holding the shares. These guys are going to get burned dollar for dollar regardless for the most part. So there's that. And so that's what we want to look at now. And that's what I want you guys to take a look at because now you can go pull up these options during earnings now. And the third thing to look for, you pull up the option chain and what you want to bring up is that you go look at the calls and the puts and start pricing it in. And from there now, you could get an expectation of what the stock, what the market is pricing the stock to do. So if we're expecting now, you know, Netflix is pricing in about 4% move, uh, give or take on both sides. You could look at Netflix now over the past year or two and see, okay, how has that, you know, how has the stock moved after earnings? Does it move more than 4%? How has it moved this last, literally, literally think about it. If Netflix moved 4% in its earnings, is if that's what it's priced to do, it's already moved 4.5% today. So put that into perspective and think about that because that is the most important part there. So based on that now, you could get an idea, well, okay, the market's expecting a lot, the market's expecting a little. And remember, this is what I pointed out if you watch the, the watch list, uh, that's the first link in the description. And then you can watch the other video the day after I put that option for United Health uh, on the watch list and that went up, um, uh, what's it called? That went up like a crazy 5,000%, I think, or also Disney too. No, that was the main one. The Disney option went up 5,000% as well. But that one had, if you looked at the option premium and did the pricing in of this, of, of the Disney event last week, it was pricing in a 2% move on Friday, which was really expensive, meaning the market was expecting a lot out of Disney. And even then it couldn't even price in what was really expected. So in that case, that truly was pricing in a, a lot. Uh, so again, if the market is heavily pricing in calls and they're expensive, or you're you're seeing the puts are way more expensive, you could start to get an idea of how the market feels. So again, now, those are your first three things. So again, recapping it, you guys will be able to go over this video. Hopefully you guys are taking notes. First thing you want to look for, company guidance. Second thing you want to look for, is the company segments that is, is specific to each company. And then the third thing you want to look for is what the option chain is pricing in. The expected move from the option chain 
And then is it pricing in calls or puts higher? If so, by how much? And then also, you want to even just see in general, if the stock, based on what the option chain is pricing, does the stock move a lot day by day in general? Is it a volatile stock or does it have volatile earnings? And put that pricing into play when you're looking at that. So those are the top three things right there. That's the first three things I want to look at now. Here's now the understanding part. So uh, the last part about this, and even because, again, I'm telling you, you want to understand by, you know, looking at guidance, by looking at the option chain, by looking at those specific segments, they all bring up an un uh, underlying concept of three specific of one specific thing, but with all three of those things. So I, I don't know. So what do you, can you guys tell me? I'm, I'm going to drink some water here and grab another water bottle. What do you guys think it is? What is the under there's there's one underlying sign with all this or there's something underneath all three of those metrics that it's related to. It's related to this underlying con. Uh, it's related to what we're trying to figure out by knowing the guidance, by knowing the company's metrics and by knowing what the option chain is pricing in. It tells us something we want to figure out. What is that question? And it's related to earnings. Uh, direction, expected, ratio. Says they'll meet expectation. What's the expectation? What's the direction? Netflix drives past 180 expectations. I would just let it go. Let's go, man. You guys sleeping on me, man? You guys sleeping on the weekend? Where you, you, guys, you guys are like, I'm not bumping. The, you're like, oh, I'm bumping it at. The, I'm bumping it at the club. That's what I would say. I got the stream on at work. You guys bumping this in the club right now? You're not paying attention? Come on. Bullish bearishness, man. Of open interest on call puts. See, it really is a course all weekend. Let's go, baby. Guidance, company metrics. The third is what the option chain is pricing in. They're waiting for you to say. I'm 16. I already made 50 candidates. All right, man. We get it, bro. We're, we're doing a lesson here. You should pay attention. You're 16 years old, so I could literally still put you on timeout. There you go. Bullish, but not worth the money to play. My third son, not, not even sleepy. Yet. Come on, let's go, chat. Yeah, let's go. Wake up. But here's the answer. The so the first, the main things we're looking for. The first top things of analyzing a stock before earnings. One, know the company's guidance, everything related to it. I won't be specific because it'll be me more brainwashing. But company guidance the key company metrics, and then what the option chain is pricing in. So the underlying question of what those three things tell us, they tell us something or they help us figure out the number one question, you guys, and that is what the market is expecting. You know, simple as that. It is what the market is expecting. Remember, that was the first thing we talked about, and now that answers what makes the stocks move. So again, it is. It was those expectations, but it's not what the expectations are. We want to figure out how the market is going to react now. By starting with those three things, we're getting clues and data now to understand what could happen or what the market is going to react to and how the market is going to react to. Are you guys following along? It's telling us the who, what, when, where, why. We know when it's going to happen. We know why, you know, we're going to, and then we're going to get more reasons uh, who, and then who, I guess, I don't know. You, you get the, you get the, the, the idea here, but it's not price discovery. No, 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 no. It's not the price discovery. It's literally understanding the market. The market doesn't, the, yeah, sure. The market has a price, but we have to say what is going to fuel the market. Every market is going to be different. You know, the market you guys for like, I, I'm sure the market, how many of you guys want to buy, uh, ASMR, you know, ear fetish earphones in here. I don't know. Maybe there might be a few of you guys, but that market's going to behave differently. If I said, how many of you guys want to buy an Apple call in the money, $10 for $1, I'm going to have a whole different market there. So it's the price discovery is one, but you want to know the key factors that's going to affect the market. In this case, this specific stock 
and what is going to make that stock move and what is the market looking for. So again, by having the guidance, we know what the overall, what numbers the market's looking for, how much money they're looking for the company to make, and we know what they're going to like, what they're not going to like. That's why that consensus and looking at the spreads between the consensus, we get an idea of where a lot of the people are at. But again, we get to see what the market is liking and what they're looking for. So again, certain things above or below that could be a surprising thing. The next thing is understanding now the segments. The company is highlighting now what is important. And now this is a next level. If you don't get it from the company, this is where you have to do extra research as well. You want to figure out now the, the uh, uh, not excuse me, the consensus, the company segments. What are now the key parts of the company? So now you could understand what's going to move the market by understanding what is part of the, what is the company reporting? What is important to the company? What do investors, that's why by finding the segments, it's going to tell you what is important to investors. That's telling you what the market wants to see by if we see those markets. And again, when other mar when numbers come out and you see the price move, we're going to see what they didn't like and what they, they, they liked and didn't like. And from there, you're going to be able to go from there. But again, understanding the segments is going to tell us what the market is looking for as far as the actual specific reports now and performance goes. But again, it's giving us that idea. And then lastly, the option pricing by people putting their money where their mouth is to protect positions and gamble on the stock, them willing to pay a certain price by expiration that tells us what price the market is expecting and how much they're expecting, you know, earnings with all the other factors in the market, what they're expecting the stock to do. And now even what the options market's looking for and the option market's looking for 4% because that's what they're pricing for. So there you go, man, that hopefully that blew some of your guys' minds, but that's the first area we start to. That's how you predict what's going to happen. And you can't predict because like I said, now this is the key. Because at the end of the day, any numbers could go on, but you don't, any numbers could come out, but you do not know how the market could react. We know what the market might like now where you see we're getting clues. Hey, the market's looking for this. The market's going to like this for this stock and not like this and this and that. However, the market may take it differently. You don't know what's going to happen. The market could come out, gives all the good numbers they were looking for. And one, one small word gets said, it sells off. Or now the expectation, it gets everything we were looking for and then they change the expectations for next quarter. It could, it could kill everything. So understand that you don't know what the markets are going to do, uh, you know, or how they're going to interpret this stuff when it comes out. So that's the, that's the gambling part with earnings. So you could, like I said, you could do all the research in the world, but you're, it's not going to let you have the ability to interpret the thoughts and feelings collectively of all investors of the value, you know, within minutes and days of this. So that's, that is going to be the big issue right there. So be smart with that. Be, be good. But that is the first three things. Those three things, man, are easy. They're simple. They're quick. It gets you diving into the stock. It's a great place to start for, for earnings. It gets you even looking at the contracts and it's awesome. And now here's the part I'm going to leave. I think I'm going to stop there. Cause again, we've already went uh, that took a long time for me to explain about an hour and a half just on that lesson alone straight, but how it's going to work. I think I'll do one either. We maybe even tomorrow or, uh, uh next week, um, it, you know, we'll do it tomorrow or next week. But at the same time, the, um, the thing I want to highlight here is like I said, coming into Monday now and the earnings, you know, go over this. There will be a replay for you guys to, to go back once this comes up, um, you know, once this comes up, it'll post a few hours after we end the broadcast, but you could go through this all. And I want you to study it. Cause like I said, we could all kill earnings. If you guys, you know, I'm willing to help you guys. I gave you those three things. That's like your, your training kit, man. You guys want to work with me, man. There you go. You just got the, you just got put on game. Cause now, like I'm saying with so many people, man, if all of you guys come with come instead of asking me about a call, go find the company you want to play go get me those three things and come to me with a full on understanding of those three things, the company's guidance, the company segments, and then what the option chain is pricing in. I will pull up that company and I will do the rest of the work. And I'll, I'll even tell you, I'll say, Hey, can you go look at, look up this or I'll, if I like it, 
uh, you know, we'll make some moves and we'll, we'll put our heads together. But that's why I really want you guys to understand this. And I want you to actually do it. I want you guys to follow through and come to me with these specific pieces of information while we're trading and doing this stuff in the chat. So you'll see the three things. If you just tuned in, we're going to have the replay up. Uh, you'll be you'll be chill. Do not worry. And again, so if you have been watching the replay, uh, I'm ending it here. As far as the lesson goes, I'm keeping the stream on. We're, I'll answer some questions here. Um, so we'll hang out and we'll answer some more questions. But as far as the specific lesson, we're going to leave it at the top three for now. Um, I, I think that'd be good. Hour and 59. 